I, f I really feel like there's going to be a shift in the music scene. There's going to be more conscious people going to be able to heal through music in the mainstream as well. I really can feel this strong, strong thing coming through with regards to music. So, for example, OK, I was watching something, Lewis Capaldi documentary, and I could just see, you know, apparently he's got Tourette's. And I, what I'm seeing is there's, there's trauma and there's anxiety and there's no space and time for him to really process this. And it's like, OK, once the pressure's put on him, the anxiety rises and it's like, he's given 12 months to go and create this album. You know, that's what most artists get. They get the team, they've got 12 months to make this music and boom. Whereas that's gonna start shifting. It's gonna become more conscious. You know, they're gonna start having a therapist on the team. You know, this is what I'm feeling within the next 10 years, you'll start seeing the shift that they'll understand that in order for them to be the best of the best, their state and their well-being is imperative for them to bring that music through. Hello, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. And today we have Madhya Mubarak. Madhya, Madhya, hi Madhya, she's Madhya, we're both Madhya. <laughs> Madhya is a British born singer and sound healer of South Asian origin. She has an etheric, celestial, and haunting tone to her sound of style of music. She has been singing devotional music from various cultures in ceremonial spaces for the last five years, using intention and sound as a powerful tool for healing the mind, body, and spirit. Waving the sonic foundation for novel activations and profound spiritual alignment. Let's bring her on. So, hi, Madhya, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Oh my God, it feels so weird calling Madhya, calling you Madhya, because I was doing it in your intro before. I was like, so today we have Madhya. I was like, huh? <laughs> it's weird. There's not many of us around, is there? So we never really say it often we hear it <laughs> yeah but what happens is in in our in our uh, in our community people mistake me for you so they come to me it's like oh are you Madhya the singer I was like no I'm Madhya the Madhya Sosan the motivational speaker oh okay and I was hoping that you would get are you Madhya Sosan the motivational speaker <laughs> well I've moved from Manchester so that's probably why I yes. think it's probably easier now, isn't it? Yeah, like people are like, easier. yeah. <laughs> so that's how we that's how we know each other. Actually, we we know each other through our community. I saw um I saw you in one of the event, uh, Gorton Monastery. That's when we first met. Oh gosh, you had such a beautiful. <laughs> it gave me goosebumps. Your voice was just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then and then you were you were actually really shocked by the fact that oh you're. And I was like, we had a right joke. And then and then I saw you a couple of events, like this Illuminate event. And then, you know, so um you were actually gonna come on my series two, um, series two, but then I stopped doing my podcast. And then I got back in touch with you. It's like, Madia, now's the time. It's perfect. You're releasing your album as well at the same time. This is perfect, right? Yeah. But we want to know who you are, right? We want to know I'm who still you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good man it's gonna flow it's gonna flow yeah. <laughs> right so um to start off with tell us about yourself a bit about yourself who you are what do you do um so my name is Madiha Mubarak and I'm going through a huge transitional period so um you know come from a lot of corporate business work customer service went into charity work and then from that was a massive wake up call for the you working in charities because I guess I was quite naive thinking, oh, everyone's going to be like me, mm. <laughs> that intent. And it was the same office politics that I experienced in corporate businesses, which was, a you know, and that was where the kind of saying I got was, you know, being a charitable person. So actually sometimes there's nothing to do with working for a charity or giving money, you know, that was a massive thing. I'd, and actually experiencing racism, which was, yeah, it was, it was challenging. But when you, it's when you look back at the time, it's horrific. But when you look back, you get it and you understand it. And there's more gratitude. It's very hard to have gratitude at the time, but I always find that when I reflect, 
it's like, oh God, now I get it. Actually, I'm glad it worked out that way because it allowed this, this and this to happen. So going through that experience with the racism, it pushed me because it was already, you know, that fear of like, so I had the catering business just doing the odd pop-up stall. Um, but I had like one foot in, so part-time charity work and then just starting this, you know, having a, a, my son as well. So it's, you know, worried about the finances. So I thought I've got security there and on the weekend I'll start building this up, um, which was my catering business. And then, so that experience actually woke me up and drove me think, you know what? F this, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do things the way I want to do them, you know, kind of take control back. So, yeah, so the self, you know, and you, financially it was challenging, but I don't regret it. There's, there was just sense of liberation being my own boss, you know, yeah, just being my own boss. You know, I could go to, you know, on a Monday, Mondays were the best. So I do catering events on the weekends on Mondays, you know, and it'd be really cold, wet, windy weather. I'd be in my dressing gown with a cup of tea going through my emails. Oh, my God. And I really appreciated it because I had like 15 years of getting up at a certain time, taking my son to school, going to work. I've, I've done, you know, I've ticked all the boxes. So, yeah, so then I did loads of community events, a lot of charitable events through the food, um, worked very heavily in the community. And then I had some awakenings. I had a few, um, I had a friend who tragically died. And I think that really, awoke, yeah, that something shifted in me mm. on a spiritual level. Um, mm. And that's where I had a healing session um from jay diamond i'm sure you know her oh yeah i met her yeah. i actually met her like oh, few days ago. Yeah, it's like the first time i met her <laughs> really oh yeah she's back up in manchester so yeah so yeah. she um so i was in a bit of a bit of a weird place and someone said oh you're a healer and i remember choking on a drink a fizzy drink i was sat in the park and i just in my head i thought i've never heard something so ridiculous in my life i always thought of things of like disney and all kind of out there things and it's like, no, no, you need to go and see my mate, Jay. I said, seriously, you need to go and see her. And I felt like I was going a bit mad. You know, which is the signs, as we call them. And they don't no, stop, no. by the way. No, no. <laughs> they keep carrying on. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's forever thing. And, um, yeah, so I had a healing session from her. And that opened, you know, when you look back, I was like, oh, okay. So that was introducing me to energy. And then I had a um, Reiki attunement with her. I felt really pulled. Just messaged her the week before and she was like, oh, you know, because she could feel it. But it was, and that's why I resonated with her because it wasn't like she was pushing people to do it. She kind of thought, okay, when they're ready, they'll come. So that resonated with me. Um, and then from there, um, I was having a cold angelic experiences. Mm, amazing. We'll go into that. Uh, like I've got yeah. quite a lot of questions I want to ask yeah, you so, about this. And, <laughs> You know, and I think the key is they were my experiences. Mm. This was my experience. And through my experience, I can only talk from my experience. And yes, I've, you know, I've studied and I've read books and that has assisted to help me understand what was actually going on, you know, mm. if, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, so then the angelic crakey kind of energy came in. So then I set up this little therapy room in the front of my living room. It was just sort of spinning. I'm so active, my brain's so active, so I was spinning 20 plates. So then I had single mom, so running a catering business, and then I had this little therapy room where I began just helping people within the community. And then that started to expand, I started working in medicine circles. Mm. Got six years of experience working in medicine circles, and there was a lot of, I would call, activations, is a word that people use. And again, it's just a terminology that helps me understand a process. So activations, I believe, take place when we clear a lot of our own debris. Mm. So what I feel and see our energy fields, things that we pick up on, things that we hold on to. And as we start clearing that more and more, um, <clears throat> I found that allowed space to come in to use my voice as a healing tool. Mm. And ironically, I'm having to do everything that I'm petrified of cameras talking to people mm. singing you know um so what I found in the deep states of meditation so my granddad my dadaji um he was a Gowali singer you know devotional singer and he came through really strongly and was like yeah you broke the cycle that's all I've, I've got off him by the way and the odd smile you know 
and there's a part of me that still feels like I need that and it's being honest there you know there is that part of me that wants to him to say a bit more but mm. I guess that's something that I guess the huge system feeds through for me to kind of understand something I don't know that's my terminology of it um and my grandma comes through a lot for me so that seems to give me a sign to keep doing this because mm. I guess I'll be the first woman in my lineage to go out this this is really perfect what you just said about generational um trauma as well um you gotta be that first person to break that you know um I mean going through it like I've, I was um you know, I've been care of my mom. So um, she was care of her mom and her mom was care of her mom. So it's like the same patterns been re repeating throughout our family history. And like, it's just really amazing. You coming from um, Pakistani background as well. Um, you know, you, you're like, like like almost like it, it, you become a black sheep of the, of the family because you're broken that curse right <laughs> you're broken it it's it's not it's not easy mm. you know you know there's this part with like oh my god that's amazing it's amazing but behind the scenes you know there is a lot of challenges you know and I love my mum and dad and there was a time with the level of trauma I guess is there was a lot of anger mm. You know, and I guess what the anger was, the suppressed pain. That's to me, that's how I see anger. That's when someone's been holding on to so much pain and it's their way of releasing it. Um, and what they're saying on a subconscious level when they're angry is I'm in so much pain. I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it there. You know, yeah, that's how I see it. And now I'm in a place where I just see maybe it's age, it has a lot to do with it, and experiences, and shifting frequency, which we'll talk a lot about, is as we start shifting frequency, we start seeing things so different oh, about yeah. ourselves and about other people. Yeah. And then now I, what I feel now is this sadness because I see the pain and I see the imprints because when I sit in them states of meditation and go back and just see... Uh, we only know a fraction of what our parents went through because they only tell us bits because there's a lot. I do believe our parents, there's so much more they've not shared from their childhood. Mm. There's a level of blockage there as well. Mm. <clears throat> so they did the best that they could with what they knew and what they had and what they experienced, mm. you mm. know. So a lot of their, a lot of their love came from fear. It was all fear-based. Mm -hmm. And as a child, what that can do, it can make you feel unloved and unwanted. Mm -hmm. But yet that didn't happen at the same time. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. They were there, but because of the, you know, the cultural programming, it creates a divide through the relationship through the parent and the child. Mm -hmm. Because it's the parent, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? You have to do this. You have to be this way. Because I remember my mum saying this one thing and, you know, she's good with words, my mum, really good with words. And I remember her saying that when you get married and go into your household, she goes, do you think they're going to cuss you? Oh. They're going to cuss me. <laughs> it's her words. She's quite yeah. funny. She's, you know, she, she was quite brute. you know, she's quite brutally honest. But, you know, and again, it's the belief system. She goes, you know, they're going to cuss me. Did your mum not teach you how to cook? Did your mum not teach you about manners? Did your mum not teach you about this? It's going to so reflection. Yeah. It's a reflection of me, you yeah. know. So yeah. I am then this object who's going out into this world and is a reflection of my mum. So then you then lose sense of identity. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, the people yes. pleasing mm -hmm. and the boundaries. And I think a lot of people in general go through that. However, I feel culturally for women it's shifted massively. I mean, we've got to be talking 20 odd years ago, but it has shifted massively. And and one, one thing I'm learning about DNA is <clears throat> we don't have to fully be immersed in the family to heal it. Mm, mm, and science yeah. can prove this. This is why I'm obsessed with quantum DNA. Oh, yeah. And this is what they studied, where you can get two people with the, you know, two members of the family with the DNA. It's all been proven scientifically. They're on the opposite ends of the world. They've never met each other, but they have the same DNA. One person can start their healing journey and the person on the other side of the world, their DNA will change. 
So it's very, very powerful, you know, and that's what kind of helps me through them challenging times to know that on a deeper level that the future generations that come through the bloodline and the lineage Mm -hmm. will hopefully have it a little bit more easier and have a lot more freedom, less judgment and be able to express, you know. It's also as well, like, I think... um... The female I think it's um we were entering into feminine more feminine energy aren't we we're becoming more creative where uh, we were um for for a long time period of time we were in masculine like we're now masculine so mm-hmm. it shows I mean I think from that part of the world Asia Pakistan and that part of the world they still we they still we still have a lot of catching up to do oh yeah honest. definitely definitely um but it's happening you yeah. know yeah it's definitely. definitely happening. Um, so let's um, dive into your childhood. What was your childhood like? Um, so as you as you can relate to it, you know, so I've got a lot of friends that are what you call dual heritage or mixed race because I always want to make sure I'm because every time you know, you can't say that anymore. You've got, you've got to say it this way. So, yes, I've got friends that are dual heritage or mixed race. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm not mixed race, I, I I understand and mm. their experiences because we have both cultures. We have the culture of our parents and then we have the Western culture. So mm. we're kind of, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> it was strict upbringing. And when I look back at it, it was a protection. Mm. Mm. And it kind of made me quite naive in a way. So when I kind of went out into the world, you know, there was a bit of a shock. <laughs> as to how people function and how people are mm. compared to how my parents, you know, my parents are very giving. They're always, you know, if someone knocked on the door, they were always, you know, helping people. So that's something that's instilled in me as well, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I've kind of cleared a lot of stuff, I've realised on a spiritual level, that's already in me as well. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> you know, because there was, there's a thing with the, with the trauma and complex PTSD or whatever terminology people want to give it is, I got to this point where I thought... I'm people pleasing and I'm a nice person and then realizing what if I'm really a horrible person and this has all been fake and it's Mm. like it's not that it's fake it's just a programming yes it's a conditioning because it's all it doesn't matter on the culture as humans you know there's the five core ways of being that we have you know the system you know so it's like you know uh, being validated the significance you know and we can identify that in any culture um and just thinking oh my god so am I you know going into because I I overthink am I a nice person was I fake and it wasn't fake it was I am a nice person but I was coming from a really deep programming where I wouldn't speak up when I should have spoke up Mm. and it's 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 definitely relatable because a lot of things get uh, brushed under the carpet and um and to the outside world to the community or whoever is like oh everything is perfect when behind closed doors it's like completely different and yeah. then you kind of it's... learn that in you you learn that yeah, you yeah, learn yeah. how to suppress you learn how to um t- t- tell everybody oh, every- yeah. that, don't we? yes we do and i think <laughs> 20 years <laughs> later you have a nervous <laughs> breakdown <laughs> oh, oh you got through your spiritual awakening and bam <laughs> wake up calls yeah wake up call and then you gotta like shred all those beliefs shred everything you know and it's like you know it's like oh my god like I'm having a midlife crisis <laughs> yeah and I think I think the key I think what I've learned is about balance because uh-huh. we go from one extreme to the other mm-hmm. you know and, and if it's always bringing it right back so and I think the key with having the boundaries and you know standing up for ourselves we don't have to have an attitude with it. Yes. I think this is oh. what people are, for. we can do this in the most loving and compassionate way, you know? Yes. So this is what I'm, I see a lot of aggression now. And I also see it in the memes about the boundaries and standing up for ourselves. And I, I, the, cause I feel energy and it's like, oh, it feels a bit like, yeah. it's still the polarity and, you know, kicking in. And that's what I really want to kind of become aware of is not contribute to the polarity because that's what we're all here to do is bring in that consciousness of one yeah, and how yeah. am I contributing to that am I going to play into the game of polarity and duality mm. or I'm going to do everything I can within my way of living and being to mm. become more conscious 
Mm. You know, it's not easy. Trust no, me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it is hard work, but it's the work. It's the, yeah, work. It's the work. Oh, my God. Like, it's like I was saying the other day, it's like um, so painful when you peel that first layer of this work and it's just really, really painful. But then you kind of just know how to self-regulate yourself. You kind of just like every you time you no go choice. into comp- <laughs> Yeah, you have no choice. You can't turn back. I mean, the more uh, the thing is like the, the more you push it away, knowing that you have work to do, the more painful and more you're going to suffer. So you yeah. just go with it. It's a bit like Saturn, isn't it? Saturn's like, mate, you know, I'm I'm gonna drag you kicking and screaming. Either mm-hmm. you're gonna kick and scream or you come ni- come to me nicely. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. So um <clears throat> you know, keeping with the theme of our you know, um background and culture. Yeah. So you I assume that you always found it hard to fit in in the culture. Um, or yeah, did you re- rebel or what was? I use the word rebel. I guess um, I spoke up a lot. Mm. Oh, <laughs> and it's, um, <laughs> you know, and yeah. and it's like a thing where it, you know, and I could see my parents like, no, you shouldn't, you know, you don't speak too much. You shouldn't say that. You shouldn't do that. You know, and it's, you know, people aren't going to want to marry you because you're getting, you know, you've, you know, you. have you need to be like this and you need to be like this and that then that creates subconscious belief systems um within us so yes it was a strict upbringing but you know the thing is it's about perception um mm. and realizing that there were so many positives in my childhood my parents are amazing cooks you know? mm. amazing. and even though That's I was you got it <laughs> yeah this is why um even though I was kicking and screaming at the age of 11 12 mum's mm-hmm. like get in that kitchen and I'm like no I want to play outside I, I was there in my Asian suit she had me in the badminton racket you know so <laughs> I was like I want to be out playing you know badminton she's like no in the kitchen so she had me you know and I remember crying crying my eyes out like sobbing and <laughs> doing the making the dough for the ad and just like really angry and just like you know and I'm like when I have kids I'm not gonna make him do this you much (laughs) you know and she's like yeah we'll see we'll see all this you know so anyway and the crazy thing is there's been moments where you know like sometimes when I wake up at silly o'clock and I'm wide awake at four five and I'm hungry I can make something and I remember I was making chapatis late at night once and I just giggled to myself because my mum goes she goes watch you watch one day you'll be grateful this and that the other and I was like oh I don't want to admit it, but she's right, you know. So she, you know, one thing I I, I love is the fact I've be, I became very self sufficient mm. in that sense, you know. I didn't become the dutiful housewife and whatever else, but it made I used that programming of training to be the good Pakistani wife to then I implemented that in mm. in how to survive. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that meant you know becoming yeah, self-sufficient yeah. and being domesticated looking after a house you know that was my forte mm-hmm. and cooking and cleaning um but yeah it 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 did have its challenges um and you know and everyone can relate to it on some level I think you know we live in a generation now where populations are expanded so much and there's you know tr- there's a scale of trauma there's intense complex trauma and then you have just they call it the big t and the little t which means that we all mm-hmm. experience it on some level oh, yeah. you know, if someone can have a um someone can have what you call um a stable upbringing but they can lose someone very close to them so that stability can go if, through a tragic death mm. or That's even you uh, see what uh, means that we yeah. all have a level yeah. of trauma yeah. just yeah. on the surface and it's like whoa yeah yeah, you think you do. Sometimes it's like, oh, my parents were um, like, we had the house, we had everything, we had the cars, we had the financial freedom, we had um, like love. But sometimes one of the parents could be just like saying no to certain things. And that's a trauma there itself. You got to learn how to implement that into the world, you know, um, and boundaries, <laughs> setting yeah. those boundaries as well. Well, it's in, yeah. So the thing with like poverty as well, coming from my parents, coming from Pakistan, coming to this country, you mm. know, for a better life. And I remember my dad once saying, just being really young and him sat there and him saying, you know, we didn't plan to stay here. You know, if you yeah. speak to the older generation, their plan was to come here, make as much money and then go back to Pakistan. You know, yeah. that's what they, you know, and it just, it ended up where it ended up, really. Mm. 
Um, yeah. So you um, uh, touched upon anxiety and you know mental health issues like you know in um I don't, well talking from you in the previous the, the previous time I talked to you um and so do you want to tell me a bit about that you know what was your experience and what was it what was going on energetically what was going what trauma was coming up for you while so, going through that period yeah so what I've come to realize is, so I've been on this, what I call spiritual path for about, I've been on it, yeah, right, the huge, I mean, not my whole life, I guess, from the day you're born, but when it kind of amped up, would I say the, te- the past 10 years? And then working in medicine circles, doing the work to a certain degree, some stuff was just not shifting. Mm. So what I found was, and it's just taking that accountability, is that I used spirituality as a way of escapism mm. oh I see that and it's been and the thing is it's been really honest about it you know yes. and saying, you know that there was a part of me that really struggled to fit in you know I, and I still do and but the thing is I'm all right with it now you know and going into the and what I realized was there's this huge part of me of needing to be part of something but because I was also unaware due to generational trauma of you know being the good girl being in service blah 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 blah, what is expected but at the same time there was core work for me to do Mm. on the surface people could see this confident bubbly lively person but internally the level of self-esteem I had was zilch I you know I still working through it no confidence really the inner critic was just Mm. there 24 7 to the point it was just I kind of got used to it I didn't know any different until I started doing the work so I got to a point where I guess you know my teenage son has had his been through I'm not really going to go into too much because it involves other people but he's been through his own challenges and being in a dense city and then him being around environments and then seeing a shift in his personality I then was like okay we need to move Mm. and shift from here and that was I would call another level of awakening so Mm. then having to shift and then start afresh just felt familiar to Mm. my nervous system if that Mm. makes sense from Mm. when I was younger having to start afresh and then my body started to shake a lot I was just I was was like this Mm. I was like this Mm. I couldn't you know so all my spiritual practices were not helping me Mm. and um I then became I'm just going to be completely honest I became quite resentful towards spirituality I kind of for about three four months I closed the doors completely on it um and then but I guess that's what was needed Mm. to go deep into the visceral kind of what's really going on here what is the program in running and it's, as you know, with trauma, it's the fight, flight, freeze or fall kind of dynamics playing out. But what was going on is being 42 now is the amount of times I pushed things down in my body when things were not OK. I'm like, it's fine. But it wasn't fine. You know, if you, if I explain the situation to someone, it was like, what? And I'm like, and what did you say? I said, I said, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> you know, people are like, what? And that's so th- what you've got to realize is that's decades of yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. Then my body's gone. I can't, it felt like, it's, I don't even call it split personality. They felt like there was my consciousness and then there was my body here. My body basically pulled one finger up at me and said, F you. It's the only kind of way I can explain it is, and that's the only way I was able to listen to it. Mm. yeah and I, I it's it's totally understandable because like I've seen and interviewed and talked to quite a lot of people who were suppressing their things and they turned to drugs and alcohol and then they found spirituality then they turned into they 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 use that as a as a tool to to cope with their trauma rather than heal the yeah, trauma. yeah yeah that's it yeah that's what it was you know mm. And realized that, yeah, so a lot of that that work didn't involve the spirituality and there were a lot of tears, you know, mm. and I was going back through things and the tears were how much I disrespect, oh, I know I'm not going to get emotional, how much I disrespected myself. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So regardless how people were unconsciously behaving towards me, 
that sadness was more to do with, oh my God, how much lack of self-love did I have in that moment in my life mm. that it allowed people to speak to me like that mm. and treat me like that. So mm. it wasn't, there was no finger, you know, and that's where I know I've shifted is there's not the finger pointing now. It's more the fact, there's more pain in the fact that, oh my God, I'm so sorry, body, <laughs> you there. Mm. This whole time I'm chasing all this to find myself and you're screaming all along here. You know, yeah. that's the only way I can describe it is, and that's what it was. It's so emotional, but yeah, it just felt like my body was just saying, listen to me now, seriously. Mm. It just couldn't. I went through a stage where I was struggling to function and I thought, oh my God, how can I go out and become a healer and do sound healing when I'm an actual mess? That's mm. how was the internal dialogue. Like I'm a hypocrite, you know, I'm, I'm one of them. What do you, you know, there's spiritual charlatans, all the internal dialogue played out. <clears throat> and that's why I just kind of took a break from it for a bit mm. to do that really kind of deep work. And I think it's really important when you're doing a lot of spiritual work is to understand the psychology and understand the neurology of the body. I think mm. it's super important. Mm. And uh, I think that's what's happening now. I'm seeing that more now. Um, people are understanding. It's information. So the way I see is the consciousness on the planet starts to expand. So we have more information coming through. That's what's mm. really, that's what I see. It's like, oh, okay. We're at a level where, okay, we've got enough space and understanding to allow the information to come through. So now I'm seeing more of, and it's really refreshing, seeing more of spiritual um, people taking on the psychology and, and things like the breath work. Yeah, it's really, and, but understanding the science behind it. Whereas when I was growing up, science was here and spirituality was here. And mm -hmm. now I'm just seeing, did, 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 did. it's actually, it's not a competition. It was more of kind of like who's right and who's wrong. They're actually complementing each other. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, because, you know, everything's advancing. Information's coming through. Science is understanding that, ah, people are changing their states. And what they're doing is they're using metaphors. That's mm -hmm. what they are. So that could be, um, that metaphor could be a specific deity. It could be a specific crystal. It could be a specific circle. So you can always access that information, but you're going to access it the way you feel comfortable and what resonates with you. Mm. you know? And over like pandemic as well, like a lot of people went through awakening, you know, um, because they had no choice but to sit. They had no choice but to sit. The outside world, the external world stopped. And then this is where, and and there's, we had like quite a, um, um it was about 50 50 there's other, some people going through their awakening there's some people actually thriving in 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 um in lockdown whereas the other people were just like destroying self-destructing um in as they were going like you know turn to alcohol because they don't know they don't know how to deal with it our system doesn't know how to deal with trauma <laughs> Well, this is it. So, the, so I'm seeing it on an energetic level. It was like a level of integration. So there's so much. And what's happening in spirituality is on the rise. Everyone's doing clearings and healings. And it's like, okay, and integration time. That's what it felt like for me for, for Mother Earth. It's like, okay, we've done all this work. It's time to integrate it. Um, it's interesting. You see, and what I'm also seeing, it's coming up very big in my energy field is, so, okay. So you look at a system. So we're going through something called software upgrades. So it means if information is changing. So what worked in the past is not going to work now. And it's not disrespecting it. It's not saying it's not, It's you know, at that time, it was imperative we had that. However, now we have access to information and we have, you know, the knowledge that we're all can access at the tips of our fingers is the awakening of that, what I call the inner guru the inner teacher the inner master it's all the same but everyone has their own way of explaining it mm. so this is what it was it felt like this first wave of the awakening of the, the you know and where we're at some people you know I don't really want to call it a test it was more like a, a, a review just to see where we're all at really and I actually surprised because I'm quite comfortable in my own mm. space 
um, I was quite surprised how the first two waves was bliss for me. I'll be completely honest. It, it felt like complete bliss. Mm -hmm. And then the universe went, right, your turn. Kick up the astral. <laughs> we call it the kick up the astral. I got to kick up the astral. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really polite term of, um, of saying it really. And I think there's a lot of stuff that's out in, and it's really massive. I really don't want to go into it in the spiritual community of like really influential leaders that people have looked up to and how people are of seeing things and, and their beliefs, if that's what it is, it's all belief systems, you know, people's belief systems are being annihilated mm -hmm. and they will keep being annihilated mm -hmm. because it's shifting frequency because it's keeping, it's keeping people at a certain level. So the next level is the awakenings happening within us. So everyone going out to find the healers and find whatever, it's all within us. Yeah, it's within us. We, the, it, the we are the channel. We yeah, are but the, the thing channel. is, there's, there's an intellectual level where I got it, mm. but now I get it. Mm. I get it. Mm. I get it on a, it's like, this is what I feel embodiment is, is I actually get it because I'm experiencing it myself. Mm -hmm. but through my own personal experience, I've let go of a lot of my own belief systems and that's why certain things aren't resonating. That's why I mean this really, okay, <laughs> I feel like you've got, you shift a timeline. I've missed my foot in, I'm in, in the void, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's me, my analyzing it, but it's, it's not something's just, I have to be there for now. And, I, and it's, you know, trust and surrender and we say, and it sounds so beautiful, but when you actually have to do it, <laughs> it that's when the resistance comes up. Because it's like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm yeah. feeling pulled and called to get this music out. It's just something's pulling me. And the universe has just put me in the situation. So I was trying to do this other work. And it's not it's not flowing. Mm. Mm. And I'm, it's just not flowing. Put an event on. No one bought a ticket. And that dented my ego. I'll be honest with you. It was like, it was an egoic thing that was going on. It's like, oh, my God, no one likes me. Everyone hates me. Blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't the universe was saying, this is not working anymore. Oh, yes. This is not working. Yes. It, it got me to a certain point. And it's like, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's that's the main thing about this album is, is this massive, it's a pull. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it, you know. Yeah, no, I, I totally Everything get it. Everything I fear is this album. Yeah, it's not even self-beliefs. There's like so many relationships are just making their way, exiting um, us right now, especially over the last mm. uh, last four months has been like every, everybody, you know, it's like left, right and centre yeah, because they're no longer the same uh, frequency That's it. anymore. That's it. It's like yeah. physically you feel like like you're rupturing in within the relationships itself or even your belief system because you're no longer that person. You just yeah, cannot resonate definitely. with it. And there's certain friends where I, I got to, I get to a point where it's like, oh my God, I moan so much. Yeah. I was so unaware. Yeah. I was just, you know, I'm just, you know, letting off steam or just, you know, having a chat and having a catch up. But in the moments I was just... I wasn't saying anything new, mm. really. I was just yeah. going over the same thing until until I got bored of myself. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. I got really bored of myself. I'm like, you are boring, man. I'm boring. <laughs> I know. So I've been in this it's room. Like, it's like, oh, what, what am I watching tonight? Movie thing. Oh, it's just it's just not, there's no thrill in it anymore. It's like, you know, you, you've got to... Oh God, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be adventurous. I want to explore. I want to. Yeah, the past 18 months. So I thought I had my life figured out. I thought I did. And then I looked back and I looked at all the things I was doing. And I was like, oh my God, like I understand why my body broke down in the way it did. Mm. Breakthrough or whatever terminology. It was, it was horrendous. I'm not going to lie. It was horrendous. Um, and that's why I questioned spirituality mm. as like, but that was my that was my drug. That was my safety net. Where is it? Why is it not helping me? Hmm. Why can't I couldn't even meditate? It hmm. was really, you know, well, the dark you needed metal, to so Yeah, I was about to say people want to call it, you know, there's yeah. different terminologies, but night um, I've had more than one, so a dark night as well doesn't resonate with me. It's been so many. 
yeah. like dark season of the soul I don't know you know you know what I mean yeah I know I know I just like I it, it keeps coming in the last six years since my awakening seven years of awakening it's like keeps coming and going and then you hit a state of blissfulness where everything's flowing to you because you're a new frequency new vibration you're calling in and then that you're ready to shred that you're ready to like you're done now you you're ready to upgrade then you enter that void and that's where the dark night of the soul is oh yeah. my god it's so painful you're shredding you're crying you're all of that and then you hit that new upgrade of frequency and new exciting things comes and then just to say how it keeps happening <laughs> yeah it keeps going it keeps going and just know that it just each time it's just so it's like a you know you get what are they called is it when you what are they called catapult things you know what i mean um and, bow and arrow no wait <laughs> Okay. What they're called now? The twigs and elastic band, and you put stone in and you. Pull oh, it. I know, I know, but I don't know what it's called. Yeah, well, that's, that's basically how it works. So yeah. when you're being pushed higher, you'll get pulled back a bit. Oh yes, that's the kind of uncomfortable, uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. So for me, it was, um, it was actually um, illuminate. I was um, there's massive transmission came through when I when I when I was doing the singing. And I went home and I had this, um, this kind of called it like an etheric weaver and I loved it. Again, it's all attachments, you know, just couldn't, I couldn't do a healing without it. I had to go mm. to, do, had to have it with me. Okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to have this with me. I have to have it with me. Anyway, so I came home and I opened the box. I had someone told me to have it in front of me when I was singing the set and it bubble wrapped safely, like just treat it like a newborn baby and got home opened it and it was completely the point was cracked like it'd been smashed against something and oh wow it was like yeah. you know the attachment to it and then I was he messaged the people I was like oh my god this happened what, what does it mean going into and they were like oh congratulations it means that you've had an upgrade and it's like but my life's falling apart <laughs> it doesn't make how can I okay you know, so sometimes when people try and say things that are positive and you're not feeling great, it's not useful. And that's no. what I've learned. And I probably used to did that many times. And and that's one thing I'm starting to learn. And I've got rid of a lot of my crystals. Yeah. That I have huge attachments to and um, oracle cards. And it's not, it's just the lesson I was being taught by the universe. Mm. And it's saying that they're not necessary. Yeah. And it's, but I respect everyone where they're at. And it's not saying no one's right, no one's wrong, but this is the information that's strongly coming through right now. And it's because I've experienced it now. And the energy work that I'm doing now is, you know, it's frequency and it's intent. Yes. The intent's there. So it doesn't matter where I am, doesn't matter where I'm, what, what I'm wearing, I can close my eyes and won't do it now because I'm <laughs> for the energy. But if I just close my eyes and just for a split second, just it literally takes a split second now because it's practice. It's like the muscle memory. And I'd question it first. And I was like, oh, and now I'm just because it's like, okay, I've you did I've done it enough times, I'll just anchor into that and I'm in it and I can just work and close it and I'm off. Yeah. So, and yeah, I do yeah. I do use the sage because I love the smell. Oh. I love the sage smell and Palo Santos as well. Is so you know, lovely. and this is the this is what's really coming up is the energy shifts that when we start shifting our frequencies, um, when we do the inner work, that's how you know is when someone's really gone in, done their work, their frequency shifts, and pe you know whether people are ready to hear or not. The next level in the next ten years, our energy fields we can walk into an energy space and clear it. Oh. You know, wow. and the thing is, because we don't believe it, we can actually do that right this moment. When you go into an energy space, the all, uh, everything, the directions, all of that is a metaphor for you to access a data point in the universe. Mm. You know, mm. so when people have this experience of connecting with um, Archangel Michael, some people might see a blue ball, some people might see an angel with wings, some. Some people might see, you know, everyone sees different things, mm -hmm. but they're accessing the same point is my understanding. Mm -hmm. And the way this energy center, the larger consciousness system works is if the belief system's strong enough, it will create it within the universe as well. It's just stuff that I'm learning within the quantum field. It's 
fascinating and these are metaphors <clears throat> yeah and I, I, it's so um relatable as well like the um crystals when I went through my awakening it was yeah like I said seven years ago I had about five <laughs> crystals like in my both of my wrists <laughs> like all the crystals I can find I had and I had the I had the bracelet as well and carried it in my bag it's like no energy is gonna hit me <laughs> and then oh that doesn't oh, no, work that, it, it, and but that what well, I found it was just too much energy I didn't realize it until somebody pointed actually you might want to get rid of some of these they are don't get me wrong you know they are powerful I've worked with crystals you know and if you think about um, electricity clear quartz when it's put under an immense amount of pressure it generates electricity which is why you have clear quartz in laptops and and phones and and watches and whatnot um so I think for what for what it is for example like if I'm you know I had an, a, a situation where I was on the moat just happens a lot this is I was on the motorway went to the service station and there was a woman at crying on the floor it was Christmas day really? she was it was a small car the kids were in the car and she was sat on the floor just in a mess and it's like you just you don't leave someone like that, do you? No, Even if you, you say, don't. are you okay? And they say, yeah, I'm fine. You leave them be. So I took her inside, but I was able to do energy work with her on such a subtle, subtle level. Mm -hmm. I didn't have sage with me. I didn't have crystals with me. I didn't even speak about spirituality with her. It's just having the understanding, I think, because I've had so much experience of working with people from all walks of life um, and seeing that, okay, knowing what language to speak in with her yeah so it was like okay sounds like you're having a bit of a panic attack that's your anxiety you know so kind of and the thing was because I was the shaky girl a year ago it was like I know that place I know it you know so just like okay got some more just just sat with her didn't go into a whole spiritual spiel and didn't go into affirmations or nothing. I was like, just, it's okay. Let's just sit and breathe together. Just take a deep breath. I'm just chatted. And she's like, oh my God, I feel so much better. She goes, I'm like, I just like, you know, and I didn't have to wave my hands or the light language or whatever people feel they need to do. That's, you know, sometimes that comes through in specific teaching um, healings, but it was I found it really profound mm. you know mm. and she said oh and she couldn't even drive so she lived 20 minutes away from where um she was going to her parents so her dad was coming to pick her up so I made sure dad was coming to get her and kind of we just exchanged numbers because I wanted to make sure she was all right you know and she's like just checked in with the day after she went oh and just gave her a few tips I'll probably never see her again or never speak to her again but I like to think I gave her some huge goes gave her some useful tips. So when she ends up in that state, coming back to her breath, mm. think of um, something that brings joy to her. Close her eyes and she's in that space, you know. And that just regulates. So it's you know rewiring that, you know. Mm. And she sounded she seemed pretty burnt out as well. So and I'd experienced it, and whatever helped me get through it. I suggested it. I didn't say you need to do this or you have to do this. I said, look, I've been where you're at. It's very challenging, but I found this helped and that helped and that helped. Mm. You know, and you know, I really, really, really hope she's implemented them in in her life, really. So I'm at this really funky stage now where, yeah, so the massive call to do the music and the sound healing. So I work with frequencies, so I do things like tonings. So when I make certain sounds, which can be quite piercing, people feel it. Mm -hmm. So it's all through experience. So I'm understanding the science behind it, but I've experienced it. I've physically seen people um, experience, you know. So when I was playing around with it first, because I was like, oh, I need to understand it. So this is why I'm taking my time coming out, because like, I really want to understand what is going on. So I sat with my friend and she's in the car. We're just like, let's try something. So I sat, next, sat with her and I thought, I'll tune into her energy field. Mm. Like, oh, and she said, I can feel that. She's not super spiritual either or anything. I mean, she's quite sensitive and she's very open and receptive. So I thought, great candidate. Mm -hmm. So, and then all of a sudden I could just feel this energy go here and then in her throat. And she was like, oh, my throat. And I started to cough. 
So I don't know this energy, whether it's my higher self, guides, whatever metaphor people want to give it. I just got a strong message to tone. And in the beginning, I'm like, no, no, that's weird. The t t I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> really? They're like, no, you need to tone. It's like, okay. So, and then I, found, so I kind of sat there and I, I, it was like a, you know, when you tune a radio, ooh. so I was doing all this for a while and then I hit it. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, hit the spot. I just knew it just felt right. It just felt right. Um, I didn't have any machine to measure what hertz and frequency it was, but it just felt right. And then I just went on her, just opposite her on her throat. I just went, ooh. but it just went on for quite a while. Wow. And, I, and a part of me is going, God. It just went, it felt like it went on for quite a while and the energy just came in. And then I kind of sat there and I could feel the space felt differently in the car. She just was like, I don't know. I don't know. They told me to do it. I did it. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, when you were toning, this happened, that happened, this was going on. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I know it can freak some people out. So what I'm coming to understand is I was like, oh, shall I get some sound bowls? Shall I get a gong, you know, falling into this? And it's like, and they were going, no, you're the tool. I was like, you're calling me a tool? Like, no, you are the tool. <laughs> okay, right. That's it. That that kind of helped me understand. Yeah. I mean, like your voice is just, ah, oh, like it's so good. Every time I listen to it, it gives me goosebumps and sends me somewhere oh. like I've never been before. Okay. Like, well, you know. That's perfect. You give me that feedback. So what I'm, because I work with frequency and intent. So yeah, this was my next question as well. Yeah, so so yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? So what I, I don't, I'm trying to find a way to explain it is I feel like I go into the space. So most of the times I keep my eyes closed and I think as I get more confident in myself, what they're telling me is I'll be able to open my eyes and do it because it's quite a strong energy that I'm working with. It's the fact that if you, you know, if you're feeling that and I'm bringing, you know, you know, so in order for my energy field to hold it, it's like, I just close my eyes and I'm like, Oh God, oh, people don't, you know, go into that. Oh, people don't think I'm being rude, but it, I realize it's a state mm -hmm. thing going on. Um, and so, yeah, so I visualize sending my consciousness higher and that means like lifting your vibration. And um, what I'm understanding is I was doing some work with Trevor and he's like, okay, take your consciousness higher. And I'm like, and he's like, no, he's like, cause I'd gone into my head a bit. I was, and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing it right. He's like, no, no, just use your intent. So I kind of went straight into my heart, used my will and intent. And it felt like an aspect of me, <laughs> this is so funny, this, um, do you remember Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the original film? Yeah, I've not seen most of it. but Okay, yeah. well, yeah. It's, it was a, one of my favourite childhood films. And in the end, there's this glass elevator that comes down. Honest, like I'm, I'm in this space and <laughs> like my higher self created this, the glass elevator from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I, I was like, what's going on? And what I understood was it was a metaphor so I was accessing this information, but in order for me to go up, the, the system or my higher self knew what it had to do to take me higher. So for me, it was a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory glass oh, elevator. Wow. For somebody else, it can be a ball. Um, it can be like a orb, orb of light. It can be a deity that that resonates with them. It does, you know. The thing is, there's no right or wrong. But for mm -hmm. me, it's the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory glass <laughs> elevator. That's what oh, I do now. Good. So when I need to go up and set my intention higher, close my eyes. But the thing is, it's so clear in my head now. When I close my eyes, I can see it, and it's like you know, like the TARDIS <laughs> comes in, and I step in, and, I, and 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 I just fly up. <laughs> energetically and I'm just there now and it's like okay I understand this is the kind of stuff I want to really start teaching people once the album mm. comes out is it's your personal will and intent that shifts your frequency you mm. know more than 
anything is that that's one thing I've learned so what is the um so you know you do chakra toning like I've been mm. to one of your event and oh my god like the, the one way the sound that each each chakra we have a certain sound don't we so can you tell us a bit about that you know the frequency so they're at the energy centers these are like vortexes or that where energy just builds up more and more um so you have and what's fascinating is their vowel sounds so you can look at any religion you can look at any religion if you look at the scriptures and you look at the way they do their sound phonics for their for, within their religion the and science has figured out something to do with the vowel sounds mm -hmm. something within the vowel sounds makes you connect with the oneness so the bass <clears throat> gonna make some funny sounds but very powerful is it's just like a uh sound. And if you do it long enough, your body starts to vibrate, send your intent down there, and you actually feel the energy move. And then you kind of go up, and then it's a ooh, that's sacral. Oh, notice they go higher. Ah, uh, a, uh, a. So if you noticed, they go high and high. And this is something that's it's actually really powerful to do because we're all channels. So it's our connection to the universe. So what this does is if you just do this a couple of minutes every day, you strengthen your connection and your channel. Things like your creativity will expand. If you use your voice, um, if you sing or you talk, you'll find this will become more harmonious and more balanced. So, yeah, it's a good all rounder, I call it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I think it's like whenever we um go into these events and when when uh, that's my favorite chakra toning. It's like it immediately makes you feel so much lighter and just like it feels like yeah, your body's like it's got nothing nothing inside of it. You know, I love that feeling. <laughs> Light feeling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um so um we talked about belief systems if you want to talk a bit more about that but um I really want to ask you about angelic reiki. Okay. Um you know something that you mentioned uh when we had a pre-chat. So um what was what has been your profound experience working with angels? Um, there's been so many. Um, I think I'll mention the two that were really profound was, um, I was in the kitchen, I was washing pots, I'm in my pyjamas, got my apron on, very, I've got my marigolds on, just so you can picture it. In this little kitchen, this terraced house, washing pots, and this feeling just came over me, and it's just like... I've never fitted in. I'm always going to be the odd one out in the family. Never fitted in on the planet. I actually don't think I'm from here sometimes. You know, this weird thing. And I could just feel this voice came through and it just went, we're your family. Mm. These people are your servers. They're serving you for a higher purpose. Still don't understand what that means on some level. But my body kind of um, reacted to it and I dropped to the floor it sounds weird but I just dropped and it said everyone everyone that's ever challenged you or ever hurt you or ever belittled you or ever took your power away from you was serving you oh that's they, these yeah. are the words that came through that they mm. part of the reason they came in were well, they were accelerating your growth you wouldn't have grown otherwise if you didn't have any of these experiences Mm. we're always here we're always with you and um yeah it was just it was very very profound very I'll never forget that oh my god like I had a something similar experience where um they always use the word when you're channeling we we are here we are here we so it's like you know when I first went uh through my awakening and I was channeling quite a lot because my frequency was just like mm. oof, you know and um and I'm just sitting and in the car, I'm asking for direction and asking questions. And it just immediately would come in. We are here. You're doing well. We are here to support you. And that was just, it kept me going because awakening can feel like you're going insane. So that was the only thing that was yeah. keeping me going, you know, and the experience in when I had a really brief experience with um, 
while in in that like frequency awakening and uh, I I was sitting um, against the wall and all of a sudden I felt really uh, cold whole whole of my body went completely cold and I froze it's like it was summer's day hot summer's day I'm freezing and I could not move but then I just felt this presence um, angelic presence just around me and I just I just like I was just crying in like uncontrollably in like in like and like um, unconditional love I've never experienced like so um and it's it's such profound and you know that your guides are there you know that they're there for you then you know that you can tap into them you know you can ask for signs you can ask for numbers ask them to come in your dream right it's It's attention we can always connect the it's all about the um so the yeah so then what happened was a neighbor had given me some angel cards and I wasn't really into stuff then I thought okay because I really wanted to give you these mm. yes, and four four is very profound for me the numbers four four mm. it's really yeah saw your no, email no. and I was like of course it's four, <laughs> not even doesn't even it doesn't shock me I go oh my god did you see that it's just like okay that's just another just another message or whatever coming through <laughs> And um, and this was again after the friend had passed away. Um, I was meditating on this on the coach, and it was I'll never forget. It was so real. It was just like I'm walking. It was like oh, it was literally like that. There were all these clouds, and these like looked like look, I'd say angels with wings, and just sat eating. I'll never forget. It was so real, and I remember thinking, oh my god, I don't, you know, they're eating, don't intrude, and then just all of a sudden I hear, come here, you. Then a hammer and chisel. And um, again, it was a system working with me, but it was creating what it did could to make me feel comfortable. And like, I was like, I'm looking, but it was all telepathic. So mouths weren't moving. It was done with telepathy. And he's like, come here. And I looked at him, I went, you are the spit of Jesus, but you are, but I know you're not him though, you know, like this is, and he's like, okay, come on. And there's like a wooden bench and uh, I went on and lay on the wooden bench in the meditation and you got the hammer and you got this chisel and you went straight to my solar plexus and I'm like I just don't remember anything after that wow but I remember waking up on the coach going holy like what was that and I kind of looked at and I felt sore I felt like I'd been operated and I'll never forget and I remember lifting my top up expecting to because it felt you know if you've ever had stitches and you feel a bit rough It was that feel. Well, it was like that feeling, and I kind of lifted the top up to look, and everything was fine. But I was really kind of tender around the area Mm -hmm. for a few days. So that was a really profound experience. And another one. They tend to be in the middle. I was fast asleep, and the words "love." This was about actually about six years ago, and I know it sounds cliche and corny, but it was. It was. It it does though, because people say it, but until you actually experience it, you get it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just yeah, kept yeah. hearing the word love, love, and it was getting louder and louder like a speaker. And I just sat up in bed and it said, love is the answer to any question you have. Love is the answer. Yes. Anything that comes your way, anyone that comes your way, respond with love. Mm-hmm. That is that is the answer to absolutely everything. Gone. Just They've all been very random. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And another time they came, it kind of energy came through and said, um, the royal, what I understand, what the royalty terminology was, the mastery within us all. Oh. So it's the, the energy that came through was treat everyone like royalty because that's what they are. And it was so strong in my head. And I just remember walking around and I, I could feel myself like I've, I, I was wanting to curtsy in front of every person I was meeting. It was so weird. Mm. It was such a strong feeling. And it just, yeah, because I, I could feel the reverence. Yeah in each person regardless of the story regardless of the behavior it was yeah it was really prof- they were very very profound experiences um, wow that's really really beautiful i mean like you and they know, weren't and they weren't in healing spaces and they weren't yeah. in the really powerful medicine circles these all happened on run and it wasn't mars in conjunction with whatever mark mercus rec- mercury retrograde wasn't going on it wasn't a full moon mm-hmm. you know the, these were just very spontaneous very 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 spontaneous yeah yeah um experience it's yeah. usually my marigolds and apron but hey there you go <laughs> or in bed in my pj 
I, I yeah. absolutely love like, you know, when um, I'm around people who just call each other some some goddesses. I like it. You know, it's like, oh, wow, it's such a it's not it doesn't mean, oh, we're higher, we're special. This is just every single person is a goddess and God in your own right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's such a beautiful to give some. It's like you know when you say namaste, namaste, a light in me sees the light in you. You yeah. know, oh, it's it's like that. I see royalty. You know, I see you as you can still you can, actually, you can also even go ah oh, yeah, but it's all frequency. You can exactly. Say, oh, oh, you know, and I feel that someone can just go oh hi, and you can actually feel the genuine love and yeah happiness to to um. To, it's an energy thing and, and then I'll come across someone that, that will say namaste and it will feel disingenuous because they feel that's something they have to do because mm-hmm. they're, they're all we're all doing it I'm still mm-hmm. finding my place in the world kind yeah. of yeah, and yeah. um just the key is just trying to be more myself as much as possible because mm-hmm. there's always that fear oh, what people are going to think I thought you know what I've come to accept that some people are just not going to like me and I'm all right with that now Mm-hmm. Oh, you have to. You have to because sometimes not, you're like... I, that was been my biggest thing. Oh yes, yes. That was, and it's, it's admitting it. You know, mm-hmm. is not being liked. Oh yeah, it's if you um if you are going to do the work of like at service of other people, and you're um sharing your teaching, your knowledge, your wisdom, or whatever you're sharing, then you will come across people who will not will will feel resistant because it's in them right yeah. they 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 can feel something that, that you're touching something in them that they need to work on but that's not your worry that's their stuff yeah yeah um okay so let's talk about your music just quick one I just want to share this with you so what what's very important felt it's really important to say is Go that on. when someone doesn't like you the belief system was I am a bad person. If someone doesn't like you, it's very important. You're not a bad person. Yes. I think it's very important. That's what keeps you in that belief system. Yeah, music. Yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, so let's talk about your music. So um, I know you said you've been singing in uh, ceremonies and different various events, right? So how long have you been singing and and... And we'll, we'll talk about your album as well and your partner, Trevor, who's yeah. we haven't mentioned yet. So like, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. So, what, so, yeah. So with the with the music aspect is, so when I was growing up, mm-hmm. I wanted to do music as a GCSE. And I remember my mum laughing and I was like, no. no. <laughs> You're going to be a doctor. <laughs> no, well, not even that. Because it was more like, oh, girls, if they're educated, it's, you know, we can't, they're too independent. That's re- I'm going, I'm going even a generation further back now. It was the fear, there was a generation that feared educated women, you know, oh my God, we can't have them thinking for themselves, you know. So um, that pushed down a lot. So I've always sang, um, but what really allowed me, to, it was the ceremonies, was um, doing the deep work, the ancestral clearing, that I, it became an offering. Mm. It wasn't like, you know, like performance kind of, you know, it was more like, okay, go into this space and do prayers. And that really opened, I think what that really opened up for me and uh, was the belief systems of what, of religions. Mm. Um, I've not met anybody else yet, but we'll see. I'm going to say it. I love religions I'm gonna say it. I, it's where I'm at I love religions and I think what it is is it's people's interpretation of that religion so if you move away what people are doing and what people are practicing and really go down to the scriptures they all have the same yes the core. it's the same they're all saying the same thing but in different forms um and I think that really opened me up in the in the circles is we all have our own way of expressing and we have our own way of connecting to source, you know. And I think people have died over this. It's crazy that we, you know, when you look, when you actually break it down, it's like wars have broken out over belief systems, you know. It's profound. And I think this album, again, is strong message coming through is um, rather than say it, I want people to experience it. So there's lots of sacred mantras on there around the world and some that I've created through my own journey. So a mantra is like an affirmation. So 
it's working with the new energies. They call it the software upgrade. <laughs> so these mantras are working with more of the new energies to kind of really help people shift their states. So a lot of the sacred mantras are chants and kind of put you in these euphoric states, whereas a lot of the other mantras I'm doing is to shift people's programming to know that they're safe, mm. that they're healing, you know, and, we, you know, that's what's really happening within them. So the Open Your Heart song came through ceremony was to help people when they're struggling through them challenging times and when the hearts are opening and it's painful, it's know that you're healing, open in your mind, learn to be kind to yourself because the inner critic's going to always have something to say. Just speak very kind to yourself. It's super important, you know. So that's that's the the album that I'm that's kind of coming through is that and to have the, the same frequency in different languages and different belief systems but it's all the same frequency mm. so mm -hmm. it's to actually show that yes we are all one we all have our own belief systems but we're all connecting to the same thing um i feel like the music is so important because it's out there everywhere in the world isn't it so it's really mm. important to tap into the right frequency of the music because um there are you know music out there could be really hindering your growth kind of thing you know the subconscious that goes scientifically like proven it's yeah scientific. yeah can you tell us about that like you know yeah. people... so music has the ability ability to restore or distort the energy field in the body so if you know about solfeggio scales or binaural beats and science will talk about this is we have certain scales like five to eight hertz listening to certain music and frequencies at certain hertz does something to us you know and science has proven that so which is why there's a lot of binaural processing and hertz and frequencies put into the music that we're creating so when I've played I invoke the light they're like oh god I felt I got tingles up there and there so I call them truth bumps yeah <laughs> The truth bump so it's accessing information beyond all belief systems and going to the what I call the absolute truth um which is really hard to express in in a way you know I feel so when I'm singing I feel like that comes through and that's what people are feeling mm. so like there's a lot of music out there as well that is you would say would be would you class it as uh, bad for your subconscious yeah, definitely. Um, so a lot of music, for example, um, mainstream music is attuned at 440 hertz. Mm. It was at 432 before World War and then it's been attuned. Are people becoming very aware of this? <clears throat> and I feel like myself and many other artists are going to be this huge wave of this new consciousness coming into to the music scene. Um so, yeah, I, f I really feel like there's going to be a shift in the music scene. There's going to be more conscious people going to be able to heal through music in the mainstream as well. I really can feel this strong, strong thing coming through with regards to music. So, for example, OK, I was watching something, Lewis Capaldi documentary, and I could just see, you know, a apparently he's got Tourette's and what I'm seeing is there's there's trauma and there's anxiety and there's no space and time for him to really process this and it's like okay once the pressure's put on him the anxiety rises and it's like he's given 12 months to go and create this album you know that's what most artists get they get the team they've got 12 months to make this music and boom whereas that's going to start shifting it's going to become more conscious you know they're going to start having a therapist on the team you know this is what I'm feeling within the next 10 years you'll start seeing the shift that they'll understand that in order for them to be the best of the best their state and their well-being is imperative for them to bring that music through and they're going to start understanding that more in the mainstream music so there's going to be more of the well-being coming within the next decade oh, next wave yeah. i can see it's going to start coming in very very strongly and there's going to be more therapists and psychologists working with the musicians and they're going to understand that in order for them to be the best that they can it's all about the state and their well-being Oh, beautiful. And um, what would you, I'm just cut, like, it's coming through to me now. So what would you say to people who are newly starting their uh, career in music or they are uh, trying to make it in, in, make it in there? And so it, consciously, think, what, what can they do? And they're conscious and aware. Yeah. What can they do? I think you hit the nail on the head is don't even think about making it. I mean, 
The thing is, the message that's come through for me as well is, uh, we've, so me and Trevor are creating the album, a partner. He's an incredible healer and channeler, and we're working together in creating this really powerful healing CD. And, and we're doing this all on a budget. Hmm. And it, I, I don't know what's come of it, what's going to come of it, but the message, what they're saying is, do what makes your heart sing. <laughs> no mm. pun intended but it's like you've got to and it is it's really strongly coming through is go where the passion and joy is because if you're coming from a place of oh I need to become something or I need to to make something of this then you're going to struggle yeah. and that's one thing I've learned from this experience and we have so much fun we're having some because i i'm having moments where when i can't get something right i feel my, i'm going against my own belief systems are coming up and then i'm going to oh i can't and he's like stop you can do it you've got this he goes go and have a walk and then makes it a joke you know mm -hmm. rather than it becoming all this because as you know it's it can become very stressful when you're under certain environments and that's one thing i've learned is like being near the sea going for a walk you know having a smoothie taking some deep breaths and just doing something that's going to shift my state into a really good place. Whereas if you start creating and making music from a place that, oh, you know, I need, I need a thousand more followers, you know, or if I do this, I'm going to get this, you know, that's what you need to look at. It's all the belief system is if your intent is pure, people are going to feel that. And I think that's what people feel as well is my intention. Mm -hmm. You yeah. feel we're coming into the era where people are going to, you know, the veil's lifting more and more and we're going to, you know, the authenticity is just going to start shining more and more, you know, where people, you can, uh, people are going to feel it way more than ever. Like people are going to speak and no matter what they're saying, people are going to feel it. There's going to be a level of discernment saying, mm, yeah, some it's quite not right because their words aren't matching their actions. Mm. I don't know what it is, but I'm not resonating yeah it's not it's no finger pointing no one's right or wrong is they're still figuring out their alignment so you need to kind of do what resonates with you stop following crowds what's in the in thing what's the cool thing to do what's really popular it's just what I'm doing right now just feels like it's got to be done there's a there's a calling it feels as crazy as it sounds is this pull and calling to get this out whatever comes from this album who knows but all I know is that I know it will help people shift their states. Mm. That's the most uh, important thing for me. <laughs> yeah, there's one thing. Um, I was watching your video of um the album, the behind the scene one on YouTube the other day. I was like, it's stalking you, really. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, and you mentioned um something really profound. Um, having the right people working with the right people, right. Did you have that before you met Trevor? I think what was um I think what was interesting was I think there was a few other people before because I, I felt like I got the strong message through the album, started working with one person, and it just didn't feel right. Nothing, it just they had their ideas and I had this concept and idea, and they just don't read they, they just didn't resonate. So this is the third time lucky. So what happened was it was um, a mutual friend called Kaylee. She, um, it's like, and I'd met Trevor at Conscious Camp about five years ago, um, prior to when I'd met him again. And um, he was looking for a female vocalist to do Indian scales on his guided meditations, which is what he does. He creates some beautiful music. I'm sure you've experienced with um, the guided meditations he does, but he, he could hear soundscapes. Um, and I was looking for someone to do some artwork for my album. So there was this energy exchange going on. And then when I came over, this strong message came through. It's like, it's him. He gets it. Because everybody so far didn't understand the concept of frequency, channeling, allowing the messages to come through. Because I could be like, okay, we're going to go here. And it's like, actually, no, this, this is what feels right. So I had all these structures with my songs. But as I'm creating the music, it's not the same as it was a few years back because I've shifted and I've changed. So I'm feeling that's going to really come through on the music as well. I'm really excited about it. It may be controversial. Let's find out oh, wow. when it's out because there's, I've got Sanskrit on there. I've got Gurmukhi on there. I've got English on there. I've got Hebrew on there. I've got Arabic on there. I've got Urdu in there. Oh, brilliant. So, but oh, these are all really sacred mantras, you know, that are all, 
place together on an album. And I remember, say, there's one melody which I loved for the Hebrew. And I emailed her and said, oh, I'd love to use your melody on my album. She's like, no, I can't have it affiliated with Hinduism or Islam or anything. And I was like, oh, okay. And that was a message for me to realise that there's a frequency coming in, so I can't use another melody. Mm. I've got to create the melody. Mm. So mm -hmm. I, it's, it was like, oh, okay. And then there's a part of me like, oh, but what if, what if you know, people get really offended? And I, but the thing is, I know my intention is not to offend. Is is to bring. It's it's about togetherness. Mm. It's, it's about bringing it all round and people to experience, regardless of how people may see God, Allah, Jah, Yahweh, this Bhagwan. There's to me, it's the same. Mm. It's all the same, just have a different way of looking at it and perceiving it. We don't need to attack. We don't need to kill. We don't need to judge. We don't need to downsize anybody else mm. on their belief system. Um, that's that's the key. That's basically the the thing that's driving this album for me, Empire. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so Trevor is your producer as well. So he's, yes. he's um, your partner, producer, and he does... Uh, healing energy healing work as well just a very similar frequency work as well and it this is why it just feels like we've been railroaded into it because everything else just doesn't seem to be flowing like yeah. okay i've got the message he's got all the equipment so he does audio he does he does visuals he does videography he used to be a cameraman he used to be a photographer he does the healing work he does guided meditations he's a trained hypnotherapist it's like tick 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 <laughs> both of us have like you know, I'm a chef, I do energy work, I've got all this admin work experience, I've done loads of this stuff, and it's just, it's just Comes us together. <laughs> just us two, just us two on this, and, and one room with all the equipment, and that's how this is being created. This and is, I, I'm just like, I'm just, so I'm gone. You just all right, so this is why I want to, I want to inspire people, you know, I've not done a crowdfunder, I did think about it, and then the message came through, nope, do it, just do it, just do it. Mm. It's to kind of explain to people that, you know, we can be resourcefully creative if we have, it's the willpower and intent that's driven this to happen mm -hmm. and making the most of what we have and just mm -hmm. making it work, you know. I'm just thinking like how amazing it is how you two um, been on going on your own journey and like it's like coming together slowly, 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 slowly. You found each other, and it just becomes. Yeah. It's like it's, 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 it's from the outside. It seems like the perfect team to be working with. Like you're spreading your message. Yeah. I'm the creator. I'm the admin. I'm the this. I'm the that. You're working together. <laughs> just it's this, just this harmony. There's just an equalness in, and you know. And I think there's a lot of competition around. I mm. think that's what I'm seeing. And because I'm very energetically sensitive, it becomes quite nauseous for me, mm. especially when you're doing this work, you know. And it's just, again, I really want to try and not come across judgmental, but certain things just don't resonate with me and he's feeling the same. And I think that's another thing that's coming up now is that's like people like yourself and me are being pulled and pushed to do stuff that we feel extremely, extremely uncomfortable with. I mean, doing the music video, I was, I can see the uncomfiness in me and I'm cringing. When I'm watching back, I'm like, oh my God, because I see other people like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> oh God, <I'm> you know. <laughs> Just is what it is. But what was very powerful for me halfway through, through halfway through doing the video was I saw my nan's face in the lens. It was very clear. And I got goosebumps all over and I could feel her energy. And it was just like, she's got me. I could feel it. And it just something, all my nerves went. And I just looked straight into the camera and just did the whole music video. And you can actually, if you look through the music, if you play it on YouTube, if halfway through, you can see a little bit of water in my eyes. I mean, I did it all in one take, you see. So being an Aries and stubborn, I was like, I'm going to do this in one take. So <laughs> fighting back, fighting back. Actually, if they flow, they might just bring a nice little, who knows, we'll just go with it. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was quite a profound experience I had doing the music video is seeing my nan. She comes through a lot for me and seeing her in my dreams a lot. So I know she's supporting me on this. So yeah, that's uh, that helps a lot. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, oh, this is amazing. So when is your uh, album out? When is it out? 23rd of May. 
23rd of May. Yeah, and, yeah. Of May. And, and it's called, what's it called? Sorry. It's called Emprian. Emprian. So, <laughs> yeah, nice. I, I quite like the word. Um, and it was um, a lovely brother from ceremony called Luke, because I was like, I was going to call it, I said, Celeste sounds and I was like sounds a bit cheesy and a bit cliche or new age sounds and he's like send me some of your songs over and I'll have a listen and I'll come up with something and he came up with the Emprian I think he said Emprian Flame um mm -hmm. I kept Emprian and I looked up the meaning of it so basically Emprian means when human will and God's will is one mm. so that was really nice and another meaning is um, the highest order of heaven, where all things are birthed from. Wow. That's what wow. The, the Greeks believed. So I really liked it. I was like, quite I empty. like it. I like it. It's like, I like it. it's like it's... it's just something really emperian. Just, yeah. just felt right. I, yeah. The minute he said it, I'm like, yep, yeah, got it. That's it. That's, oh, that's, that's what it is. So, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I can't wait for it. But we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for it. So guys, like, check out her album. By the time this episode comes out, it's um, her album will be out. So we'll I'll link all of that in the description. Um, so, um, oh my God, we talked so much, like, about so many different things and I absolutely love your energy. And um, is there anything last? Um, I've, I've actually got rapid fire questions for you as well. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. It. But but like, is there anything else that you would like to say? Um, no, I think we've got most things covered, really. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. So, are you ready for this? <gasps> Feel like a game show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can expand on it as much as you like, and uh, okay. or keep your answer short. It's up to you. Um. Okay. So, what is your definition of God? I'm still trying to define that one is okay <laughs> is it's in all things ah oh, beautiful all things and in, in everyone on some level whether they're aware of it or not beautiful okay so what do you think happens when you die interesting I still don't I'm still quite open on that one um I think there's definitely a transition happens on a soul level, um, this is what I'm feeling. This is a feeling I get very strongly. I feel like as you shift, I feel like there's a window where you look back at your life. It's like played back to you as a movie, but not in a way you think and could ever imagine. Mm. 3D. <laughs> so, be on so for example, in, um, in a lot of religious context, it'll be seen as like a judgment, all the bad things you did and all the times you didn't cover your head or you didn't read your prayers this way or look that way and do this. It's more of the fact of the impact you had. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. That's what I believe. And then that's what pushes you to maybe want to come back and do it all again. It's that movie that makes yeah, you come oh. back again. <laughs> so, so I want to do all the work now so I don't have to come back here, please. <laughs> Fast track. <laughs> Fast track, please. First class ticket. <laughs> um, okay, so um, okay, so how do you define religion and spirituality? Okay. Religious, religion and spirituality. So I think religion and spirituality is the same thing. Religion is just institutionalized. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. I think you're the second person who said that. It's Ooh. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just institutionalized. Yeah, yeah. Institutionalized spirituality. That's what it is. Oh yes, yes. Got you there. <laughs> right. So we. Oh, well, where am I? See, I'm losing track. Oh, what is the lesson that took you longest to learn? is I'm probably still going through a, a chunk of it is unworthiness which mm -hmm. is very deeply embedded in humanity we'll say oh, that yeah one. yeah but it's yeah. a collective it's yes it's a collective yeah yeah not being good enough or yeah. I'm not enough is one big one that I'm still yeah. I feel like the, there's some some we like we go into these like events and it's like I'm enough I'm enough I'm enough but then you don't feel it it's like I'm more really like I've had enough I've had <laughs> enough I've had enough <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough. I went from I have enough to I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> yeah, this is me. It's humor is just my way of getting through life. Oh uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Bring it out, man. Of it, but, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I like to think I'm really funny, but I'm usually the one only laughing. But hey, <laughs> no, I'm Medea, 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 so laughing together. I'm exactly the same. I come up with a joke, and I'm the only one laughing. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, man, <laughs> I think I'm funny. <laughs> 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 you ever sit there and laugh at stuff you've said and think oh my god I'm so funny I know I know and then you you walk around like a weird or laughing at it and people are like, what the hell yeah <laughs> oh my god okay oh I love this um <clears throat> so do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures Through free, through free will intent, yes. Mm -hmm. It's possible. I am, so this is like, I am, you know, um, fill in the blank. I am fully in present moment when? I'm dropping to my heart. Oh, beautiful. I've got a remix of that. Do you remember the Snoop, Snoop Doggy song? Oh my God. It's heart. Drop it like I've got drop into your heart. If somebody want to trigger you, drop into your heart. Drop into... This is what I do in my spare time. <laughs> Take songs up from other people's songs. <laughs> Just remember that. If somebody want to trigger you, drop into your heart. Oh, drop your into heart. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's what was, yeah, dropping in the heart is the one for me. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love this. Um, do you believe there is an end to healing? Okay, yes and no. Go on. No, because it's constantly ongoing because there's so much clearing that we're still doing. So in the quantum field, it's already happened. It's all done, understood. But we're playing this out in third dimensional. I'm going a bit quantum now. Right. So we're, we're, we're now playing this out in three-dimensional form and going through the experiences. So mm -hmm. it's ongoing because there's so much clearing we're doing. Mm. Where this is where we're at is we're clearing 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 so in this present moment it's never ending but I do believe in time to come within humanity that there will that that will cease to exist mm. oh wow. wow for example yeah we'll be our own teachers things like the life all this where we go externally will all be it. that's that's kind of the work that I'm heading more towards is the activation is to activate people to be mm. able to become their own healers, their own life coaches, their own kind of, the the, the information that I access, I want other people to access it basically, is, mm. is my mission. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Oh my God, amazing. Um, <clears throat> the world needs more of what? Less judgment? Yes, less judgment parts, definitely. I said less, but you said more. More understanding and compassion. The, well, it does mean more of less judgment, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Getting lost there myself. Yeah, yeah. we're all, I'm, I'm coming out of it a lot, you see, and it's just taking responsibility of the times I've been judgmental mm. you know, mm. on my own spiritual journey. Mm. Oh, look at them doing that. Oh, oh. But I used yeah. to do it, you know. Yeah, and I think I think it's happening. I'm I'm very familiar with the internal family system. I really love that uh, modality. And like it's like when you're I'm judging someone or something's like, oh my part my part is judgment. Okay, what do you need part? <laughs> what do you need? What, do, what is it in you that I'm feeling judgy? And then you just work with it. It's like it moves through your body really quickly. Um. <clears throat> so one last question: What? Um, is that if okay? So if somebody's going through hard times and adversity and um, finding it hard, uh, challenging, spiritually awakening, uh, what is that one message that would you would say to them? Is to take each moment as it comes, as challenging as it is. Um, the most important thing is when you're going through these stages is to be around people that are helpful. Mm. And people that are going to say things that are helpful. Because mm. when you're going through that, you don't need someone telling you what to do and how to do it. Yeah. 
You just need someone to hold space. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. And you do it like this. This is how you do it. Oh. <laughs> no, just hold space, be in yeah. their present and just let yeah. them. Yes. Perfectly. That's the key. Perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so how can people contact you? Where are you? Where are you, Madia? <laughs> Where am I? So, yeah, I'm just, I'm in between timelines in the middle of a void <laughs> waiting for my next move. Um, Let me no, try yeah. find my social media in this timeline. So, yeah, you can find me on Instagram as Madiha Music. So our names are spelled differently. So mine's M-A-D-E-E-H-A Music. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And on YouTube, you it's Madia, it's Madiha Mubarak all one amazing. word amazing yes amazing oh thank you so much oh, well, thank you oh it's been such an amazing interview thank you so much and um i know people who audience is going to listen to this will absolutely love and resonate with a lot of things that you've said um we covered like basically all topics really so thank you so much i can put the world to rights i know <laughs> i know right <laughs> i'm gonna die happy woman <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Madhya. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to this episode. I would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. You can share your thoughts on my Facebook or Instagram, Madhya Sosen. If you would like to listen to this episode, I am on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Just search soul awakenings with madhya sosan if you enjoyed this episode then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot thank you so much once again and i will see you in the next episode <laughs>